Okay, friends. Uh, now we will talk about the co covalent catalysis machinery of enzyme. So enzyme act on different substrates. They convert the substrate into desired product. And uh, for converting a substrate into desired product, it needs uh, the presence of a specific active site which acts on the substrate. The active site is made up with uh, different amino acid sequences and the presence of the different types of amino acid sequences uh, varies from one enzyme to another enzyme and thus varying the capability of converting the substrate into product. Okay, Now in, uh, we'll see uh, the general machinery of how uh, enzyme actually helping to convert the substrate into product via the catalytic activity. Now most of the time what happens, the side chains of amino acid in enzyme active site offer a variety of nucleophilic centers for the catalysis. Okay. The centers often consist of the uh, hydroxyl group or in, in for this hydroxyl group the oxygen contains a lone pair of electron or something like that and they act as a nucleophile and that can attack uh, the group of the substrate, another group uh, of, of, of the substrate. Like those groups readily attack the electrophilic uh, centers of the substrate. So this nucleophile attack it to the electrophilic centers of the substrate and that forms the covalent enzyme substrate complex. Now after forming this enzyme substrate complex along with the activity of uh, this uh, nucleophilic attack, uh, they can actually generate an intermediate. After the generation of intermediate, water is very much needed because water comes in, it attack uh, in the second step. Uh, the covalent intermediate can be attacked by the water and after that, uh, that covalent intermediate is actually broken into two segments and the product is released. So that is uh, how uh, the overall process is actually going on. Now there are a lot of different varieties of covalent catalysis schemes but whatever I have told you, whatever it is written in this case are the generalized picture of how they are doing this. Okay. So okay. Now here is a reaction type as you can see uh, this kind of reaction in this kind of reaction suppose this is a uh, enzyme active site so E is the enzyme and this is the active site uh, amino acid X which is possessing this uh, uh, this two lone pair of uh, so not two one lone pair of electron a uh, pair of electron this electron acts as a nucleophile it can attack on this electrophilic center which is a phosphate in this case it attacks this phosphorus and after that uh, thi this uh, just uh, this uh, bond is going out and it creates a negative charge to this oxygen. Now this negative charge, right after that what happens, this, this uh, enzyme and this substrate attached with each other to make an enzyme substrate complex which is uh, in the transient state of the enzyme catalysis as we can see. After that what happens, this, electro ele ele electro uh, this electron, uh, electron pair which is present here attacks uh, this part. So it donates this electron to this uh, oxygen and phosphorus to make another oxygen phosphorus bond. So we have the double bond of oxygen with phosphorus. And right after that the OR, this group from this phosphorus getting cleaved and released. So right after the step of uh, reaction, what we produce, we produce this enzyme substrate complex uh, and another along with that we produce a product. This is the primary product, remember, because now still, still uh, now or yet the enzyme react, enzymatic reaction is not completed yet. Now in this case, right after that we have the phosphoryl uh, en enzyme. So in this case we call them phosphoryl enzyme intermediate because this, this enzyme is attached to the phosphorylated group. So it's called the phosphoryl enzyme intermediate in this particular purpose. Now after that what we need, we need the presence of water in the water oxygen will provide the lone pair of electron it will attack this uh, phosphate and again the uh, steps will go on and what happens the enzyme will be restored like EX in the previous time and another product will be cleaved out so that step is called the complement com completion step of this kind of reactions so so all the different types of reaction we are going to see we'll see up to this uh, intermediate uh, production portion we'll not see the water uh, attachment and the second step but we'll see it in case of a detailed mechanism study we'll study the mechanism of chymotrypsin uh, after uh, some slide and we'll see them later now here we can see the production of acyl enzyme intermediate instead of uh, the phosphate as a subject or phosphate backbone as a subject if we have the carbonyl backbone of a subject or, or acylated backbone of a subject then the same process can also occur this uh, ele um, electron pair attacks this carbon again uh, the uh, breaking of this uh, double bond and production of this uh, intermediate uh, attachment of uh, this uh, 
enzymatic portion with this acyl group then what happens again uh, donates another bond and bond formation donates electron bond formation then again this part is released and it produces what is called the acyl enzyme intermediate instead of the phosphoryl enzyme because in this case we have the acyl group with the enzyme in the same manner if we look in this case this is called a glucosyl enzyme intermediate because in this case what we have the glucose which is a cyc which is in a circulized form cyclized form again in this case uh, the nucleophilic attack and after that it, it attaches with that so we have uh, attached the x with e but what happens this y portion is released so after that we have the glucosyl enzyme intermediate but again this all of this intermediate glucosyl enzyme or acyl enzyme or phosphoryl enzyme intermediate these are all the intermediates so these are not the products of this enzymatic reactions only the intermediates so we need to produce the product and for making this product from this intermediates we need the presence of water we need the hydrolysis scheme of activity to finally go through that okay now we can have the presence of different types of in, uh, covalent intermediates uh, and, and uh, that kind of covalent intermediates can be produced depending upon the presence of different reacting groups in the active side of the enzyme. If we look at the enzyme trypsin and chymotrypsin we find serine as a very very important uh, group reaction group which is <coughs> which is present in the active side of the trypsin or chymotrypsin which is donating the serine and as a result of that it can produce an acyl serine intermediate if you look at the glycerol dehyde 3 uh, phosphate dehydrogenase in that case it it, it process uh, it it, deno it gives the cysteine uh, uh, reactant group it possesses the cysteine react, uh, reactant group this cysteine is actually helping them to uh, uh, incorporate it with acyl group to produce acyl cysteine intermediate so so on we have several different types of enzymes in different types of enzymes we have different types of reactant groups now these reactant groups are actually providing the nucleophiles which help them to start the reaction and produce a stable steady uh, tran uh, uh, transient covalent intermediate now this intermediate uh, can be broken down into products okay now if we look if we look in in this cases now if we look in acid based catalysis this is another type of catalysis in the same in this case of acid based catalysis two types of catalysis can be take place one is called the specific base mechanism another one is the general base catalysis now uh, if we look at the specific base mechanism what we have we are having uh, why it is called the acid based catalysis actually first of all the it is called the acid based catalysis because in this case what we have whatever we need for the catalysis purpose is either h plus or o H minus so it's a protons what we need for its pro proper catalysis purposes now this kind of ions uh, in this case hydroxyl for example can be provided directly so direct hy hydroxyl ion can come and do this job uh, or, or else uh, any kind of uh, group or compound chemical compound can provide this hydroxyl group what you can see in this case so in the previous case let me take a call in this case we are having only hydroxyl group directly working in this case we are having this total chemical component which is providing the hydroxyl group for that so if it is providing the hydroxyl group via any chemical compound we call them the general ba uh, base mechanism uh, if we are providing uh, this hydroxyl directly we call them the specific base mechanism now if we look at the specific base mechanism what it is actually doing again the hydroxyl the oxygen of the hydroxyl is uh, supplying uh, and it is acting as a nucleophile and it attacks the carbon here again double bond is disrupted one one bond is disrupted electron uh, this oxygen is negatively charged in that place right after that what happens is hydroxyl is attached to this carbon now what is differing in this case from the previous steps what we have seen is, is differing in, in in this part because in this case what we are looking at is hydroxyl is attached to it is newly attached this hydroxyl portion is newly attached to the rest of the chain in previous case as you can see in this case it was uh, it, it, it is actually paranitrophenyl acetate uh, this 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 compound uh, the name of this compound is paranitrophenyl acetate so it's a it's a phenol ring nitrogen attached in the para position and we have the acyl group attached to it so it's called the paranitrophenyl acetate so acetate is so in this case right after that what you attach to this uh, acetyl carbon we attach this hydroxyl group and right after the attachment of the hydroxyl group what happens this this uh, the bond between this oxygen and hydrogen is disrupted and donates the electron to this carbon and oxygen to make a double bond between them so we have a double bond between carbon and oxygen and as a result this hydrogen is released so right after that the uh, hydrogen in this case is released and found and after that what happens this bond between carbon and oxygen in this part uh, just getting clipped out and as a result what happens it produces 
the para nitrophenol in this case we can look at this is the this is called the para nitrophenol because it is having the nitro uh, group at one side another hydroxyl in the other side is called the para nitrophenol and right after that we we separate this acyl group uh, from this para nitrophenol so this is uh, the reaction which is carried out by uh, direct attack of this base part direct attack of this hydroxyl uh, ion now if we look at uh, the in the generalized base mechanism same mechanism is happening but instead of the atta attack of this nucleophile as a hydroxyl group in this case the hydroxyl group is provided by another enzymatic comp component another in, uh, another compound of chemical now this chemical compound donates this electron this electron can go attack uh, this carbon and this then then after that all the reaction steps are the same so in this case we are looking at okay so only thing is differing in this case it's is this hydroxyl group first it loses this bond to, to provide these electrons to make a double bond and right after that uh, this hydroxyl uh, this this carbon and oxygen bond is is broken and this bond broken breakage of carbon ox carbon and oxide uh, oxygen in this case gives rise to the para nitrophenol from para nitrophenyl acid uh, acetate okay now this kind of reaction is really really important in chem biochemistry because this para nitrophenyl acetate or para nitrophenyl phosphate whatever we can take now this is an acyl uh, intermediate but if we take the para nitrophenyl phosphate then we can have the phosphoryl intermediate now this kind of intermediate really important because normally we can utilize the the, the, this kind of interaction, this kind of actions or chemical mechanisms to, to, to study the enzymatic reactions because uh, this paranitrophenyl acetate when it is broken down, break down uh, into paranitrophenol, it denotes or imparts color. So in, in, in starting phase when you have paranitrophenyl acetate, the color uh, the, that, is the co that is colorless uh, and as soon as they carry out the reaction and produce paranitrophenol, it starts to impart the yellowish color. And as a result of yellowish or reddish color, we can determine whether the reaction is accomplished or not, whether the reaction is done or not. So this kind of uh, chemical is actually helping us as an identifying agent to whether, it, uh, whether a biochemical reaction is come to an end or not. So that's why these are really, really important markers in cell biology, uh, in, in biochemistry as well as in cell biology. Okay. So he, now we look at the metal ion catalysis. If we look at the metal ion catalysis, now why it is called the metal ion catalysis? Because this is a normal kind of catalysis uh, in uh, in an uh, active site of an enzyme, and uh, same kind of nucleophilic attack. Uh, sorry, say ha, nucleophilic at attack will be done, but the but the e exception in this case is the presence of metal ions. Now why the metal ion is found in these reactions? Because as we know, as we go on through this exp uh, through this kind of uh, reaction mechanism or reaction steps it will produce uh, a uh, negative or, or produce some negative intermediate now this negative intermediate uh, someone need to hold on to this negative intermediate someone need to hold on to this uh, negative uh, product now for holding on to the negative uh, product we need the presence of any uh, uh, positively charged uh, ion any positively charged ion like in this case uh, bivalent cation or something like that that's why the presence of uh, cations whether bivalent or divalent uh, monovalent is needed in this case now you can see as in in this case so in this case as you can see now this is an enzyme active side this active active side is possessing this bivalent cation which is zinc in this case and we are supplying the glutamic acid which is the negatively charged amino acid from the active side now this glutamic acid and the o which is uh, here is here we having uh, the lone pair of electron it actually attacks the hydrogen in this case and right after that what happens this bond between this hydrogen and oxygen is disrupting and as a result of that what happens this hydrogen is attached to this uh, glutamyl o uh, oxygen to make this glutamic acid completed and right after that is hydroxyl group uh, uh, from this water so this is a water and water is really important in this kind of reactions as you can see so water is disrupted as a result of water disruption hydrogen bond is attached to this glutamyl uh, COO to make a COOH group as you can see in this case and also this hydroxyl right after uh, this attachment this hydroxyl can go and attach with this carbon to make this compound and right after this kind of interaction this double bond between C and O is break is broken and as a result we are, we have formed we are forming actually 
negatively charged uh, intermediate this negatively charged intermediate someone need to hold on to this intermediate otherwise this this will float away and for holding on to this uh, kind of intermediate we need the presence of this bivalent cation the presence of bivalent ion is actually uh, denoting the strong binding of uh, this cation with uh, this negatively charged ion portion okay so that is really really important okay now let us move on to the next slides now uh, so that's it uh, so we have we have studied different mechanisms now if we see in this cases which is a special case uh, in in uh, in this uh, picture actually uh, the active site of aromatic amine dehydrogenase so it's a amine dehydrogenase enzyme uh, so this is an aromatic amine dehydrogenase showing that the relationship between this asparagine 128 as you can see here this is the asparagine 128 this is the threonine uh, 120 uh, 172 and 60 uh, 171 so these are the th th three different amino acid which are positioned uh, side by side with each other and fr in front of each other favorable coupling of the local motions of this residues to vibrational states involved in the proton transfer contributes to the catalysis so as you can see between this asparagine 128 is uh, is uh, quite a long separated from the 16 uh, 171 but still uh, they are arranged and they are organized they are put together in very close proximity and due to their vibrational states they involve the proton transfer from one place to another place one region to another region as a result of this pro proton transfer they are actually helping to establish a reaction really really fast really really quickly this could be so fast that it needs the the use of the concept of quantum tunneling to explain this so i am not talking about quantum tunneling uh, at all in this case but still uh, we generally think we normally think what happens for a normal chemical reaction to occur that uh, in normal situation it starts to go through like that but as we know that uh, it need to go through a particular energy barrier and that energy barrier can 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 be provided by the enzyme so in this case it it, it, it is doing so fast it is it is just going through this energy barrier so fast that we cannot explain it with our normal uh, enzymatic or activation energy concept okay uh, so this is a very very rare and special case for doing this but what is actually helping this uh, enzyme to establish that uh, it is uh, the the mo movement the vibrational states the vibrational in movement involvement by different amino acid sequences in this case asparagine 128 16 171 and threonine 172 so these are all about the different types of enzyme catalysis mechanisms there are a lot more variety of different catalysis steps but these are some of the very important ones in this case we see the presence of cation and how the presence of cation changes the course of uh, this kind of catalysis we have seen the the activity of this paranitrophenyl uh, acetate uh, acetate hydrolysis and what is the importance of paranitrophenyl acetyl hydrolysis acetate hydrolysis because uh, in biochemical tests we need vigorously need this but in this case we the mechanism slightly varying from the previous case we have seen uh, the the different types of intermediate production like glu glucosyl enzyme uh, production intermediate acyl enzyme intermediate as well as the phosphoryl enzyme intermediate and we'll see in the future slides and fe future lectures uh, how this intermediates finally gives rise to the product and enzyme is getting separated from over all these things now as you can see in all these cases enzyme is uh, involving in the reaction a little bit so the concept uh, that the enzyme uh, act as uh, act as the promoter or act as the catalyst is not involving in the reaction was wrong so enzyme is actually involving in all this kind of characters in all this kind of interactions but at the end of the interaction at the end of each uh, chemical reactions it will uh, be separated as it was okay so that is the basic concept i hope that's going to help you to understand enzyme catalysis thank you